By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim. Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today we have a very, very special video for you because you're not looking at my hands, you're looking at the hands of an old school magic player called David. You can actually hear his voice right now. And he's going to show us his Fallen Empires cube. So what he's done is, um, he's a big fan of Fallen Empires, so am I. And he's created this um, this magic cube, this Fallen Empires cube, not just consisting out of Fallen Empire cards, but also, uh, he's also added cards like, for example, Lord of Atlantis and a Goblin King to make uh, the play more balanced. And I think that is a very interesting um, interesting way of, of looking at the set. You know, one of the things you hear about Fallen Empires is that it's it's not balanced. It's really a set you play next to other sets to complement them, but the set itself also has a lot to offer. So I really like this idea of David of creating a cube um, where you, you know, where you look at, this is what the set has to offer um, and, and this is how it can be almost like a core set, a set on its own. So let's take a look at the video and I'll just sometimes be popping in and out with my voiceover. So let's uh, let's listen to David here. Because there's no pack pack art obviously for Fallen Empires, I thought it would be kind of cool and thematic to have an outward facing card. I have added a cube list by the way in the description of this video. That way it would be kind of like looking at art for the package. And generally I tried to put <clears throat> the colorless cards on the outside just because they were less sort of impactful on the draft if someone actually would see them. They're not really spoilers. So I'm going to open some packs. And we're gonna so here he is about cards. to show us the contents of the booster packs. The packs are constructed in the way of a 15 card pack, kind of like you would normally draft with, uh, with mostly commons. I think this is a placeholder for something in the dark tournament we just did. Probably the um, Goblin Heroes. So, colors are mixed up. And then something near the end, be the rare, something like this. Hintatorak, uncommon, these kind of things uncommon. Phantasmal Terrain, that's in there to help enable the blue decks, the merfolk decks. Yeah, I think that's a good decision, David, to add that Phantasmal Terrain. And remember, there's no enchantment removal in Fallen Empires, unless David added it to this cube, of Scaling course. Scaling through what packs look like. So also Fungal Bloom is pretty it's strong. Fun. Hey, Deep Spawn, love that card. So, I've tried to create different archetypes uh, for the decks. Obviously, they're mostly the colored archetypes. Soul Exchange, very Spawn. strong card with Breeding Pit. So, I'll probably type this out so that you've got something else to reference, but um, let me see if I can try to remember exactly what those deck archetypes are. Obviously, green has Thalids, uh, blue has Merfolk, and to enable the Merfolk strategies, I've got things like Sunken City and Lord of Atlantis. This is a collector's edition version. I wanted to keep all the cards black bordered. I think that's a good decision, adding Lord of Atlantis. I think you've also added Goblin King to your list. Egasian Town, I love that art. Great with Hand of Justice. Of course, the Mons Goblin Raiders, again, putting some more goblins in that archetype. Abin Praetor, great card with Breeding Pit. I use these sleeves and they're, they can basically just be reused. They've just got the sticky strip at the top so you can open and close them. So when you're playing with other people, just ask them to 
pass them back to you and you can just repackage them at the end. That is a nice idea. So, yeah, green talents, blue is there. merfolk, it also has harmorids. Uh, obviously, uh, black has thralls. It's also got Hindu Torax, which are very good. I've tried to enable a goblin strategy a little more uh, with the use of goblins from the dark, because there aren't a lot of good goblins in Fallen Empires. Which is nice, because you've got like Goblins of the Flark, you've got Goblin Hero, you've got Goblin Shrine, you've got Goblin Caves, that's all in the dark, so a lot of options. And here we see him kind of showing, showing the last couple of booster packs here. Green Pit, Ao Pile, it's obviously really good removal in the format. So it's kind of in a rare slot. There are 24 packs in total. So that's enough for an eight person draft. Again, another Phantasmal Terrain. So obviously these work in concert. There are certain creatures that can only attack if your opponent controls at least one island. So that's what the Phantasmal Terrains are for. And Justice, very powerful. Fodelia well, Knight is just such an interesting card. It's kind of called the blue, the blue knight. You know, you've got black knight, white knight, and that's kind of the blue knight. <laughs> Sometimes <laughs> that's a good. Story. Ring of Renewal, by the way, is pretty good pretty card on the top. In in a draft situation. I always really like the lore of Fallen Empires, which is why I felt compelled to make the cube. Here's another card that works. Control Magic of Fallen Opponent Empires to Sea Singer. <laughs> Opponent controls an island, so it enables Sea Singer. So yeah, as I said before, I um, I followed someone's uh, recommendations online from a Reddit post, and then I did my own tweaking. Nice thing about a cube format is that you can just keep tweaking it after every time you use it to try and make the colors more balanced. I think when we played this cube, white green seemed to be the most powerful combination using things like Icacian Javelineers and Thorn Thalids because the removal is so light in the format. Uh, red seemed to do pretty poorly, so I've bought some things that'll help red. Would you consider David maybe adding uh, the Dwarven theme? Some cards to... to... Oh, Make a sure dwarven archetype possible, maybe from homelands. All right, and that's, that's supposed to be that's supposed to be a goblin hero. Another nice part about this cube is that it. Um, Not very expensive to assemble because the cards are very cheap. But also, if you want to play with strangers, you don't really have to worry about your cube cards getting stolen because none of these cards really have any value. So that makes it useful on a number of fronts. So this was a recommendation by the Reddit poster as well to include. Obviously it's from Apocalypse, so it's much newer than Fallen Empires, but it's a merfolk and then it helps you use the, the island strategies by making your opponent's land become islands until end of turn. Or for other reasons, you can you know, turn off their mana and their upkeep and stuff. The Thrall Champion. That's really good with the Landwalk strategy. Goblin Hero. should be, I think, Goblins of the Flark. Again, I took them out for use in the Dark Tournament. Goblins of the Flark again. Breeding Pit. It's 
It's really nice to see these cards. I really want to <laughs> want a cube now. I want to test this cube. Elvis Champion. Ooh, that's an interesting card. Enabling the Elves archetype, I guess. I also, for a multiplayer version of this format, I put in a bunch of conspiracy cards. Uh, one in each pack. This one I forgot to remove, I guess, so that's why it's here. But that's a nice way you can, you know, if you want to do like a multiplayer variant of your cube, you can add in some conspiracies at the end. There's a real goblin. That's to the a floor. nice idea. Add those conspiracy cards to multiplayer. Org. So that does it for Org. the packs. Wow, that's a strong one. And like I said, I felt that there wasn't a lot of removal, which made the strategies kind of limited. So afterwards I went online and bought some cards, which I haven't integrated into the cube yet, but I want to. So I tried to do more removal, basically. So Paralyze is like a pseudo-removal. Orcish Artillery is a bit of removal. Thought Dwarven Warriors might be cool, too. That's actually quite nice. See. And you've got the Red Dwarven Archetype that you're supporting with that. Everything. There's basically no flying in the set, so this card would really help Blue, I thought, because Blue seemed to be really struggling. Uh, flight, yeah, I, I agree, David. Flight is huge. Red. Um, a little wall, that when, you know, when it dies, it does damage. Not quite a wall, I guess. Gas just form to help uh, either make a cool blocker or, you know, or you can nullify an opponent's, like, removal, kind of. On your opponent's creatures. Giant Strength, I thought could be fun. Immolations, kind of like removal. The Brute. Um, Immolation can remove so removal. much in Fallen Empires. Uh, bounce. Boomerang can be very powerful, by the way. It's such a good tempo play. I guess this was for, like, anti him to Torak. Uh, pyrotechnics. And Ooh, no, pyrotechnics no would be huge. In this format, so many small creatures. So those are all the cards. Pyrotechnics usually like a two for one, sometimes even a three for I one. I made my own custom tokens in Photoshop and had them printed online. Oh yeah, this is really cool. First these tokens. Thing I made was a sort of introduction to Fallen Empires. It reads: Fallen Empires was. The first expansion designed entirely inside Wizards of the Coast. It is easily the most complicated and best looking of the expansions. The play value is high for the complexity, and the cards are very valuable for play. The flavor is probably the most cohesive since Arabian Nights. This expansion is easily my favorite. That's a quote from Richard Garfield that was in, a, I think, one of the duelists or something like that. I also have some other illustrations by Ron Spencer, uh, Order of the Even Hand, and Thala Devourer you can find on his website so I, these were like little promo cards that i gave to everyone uh, who played the event and on the other side is like a it's meant to be like a promotional version of order of the even hand using that same art that i just showed you it's like a full art variant kind of wow so makes for a pretty cool looking proxy and that uh I really like the I didn't even know these, the set, these, so this art existed until these. you told me. We could probably do... Yeah, see. Ron Spencer art in Fallen Empire is just insane, insanely good. So, the tokens are printed front side and back side. <laughs> Look at these tokens. Is that a citizen token? For each color. So, on the white tokens, on one side is a token creature. And those are all the 1-1 one, one citizen tokens that you get from Mycation Town. And then on the other oh, yeah, side, we've got citizens. Javelin counters that you can use. So you put those on your Acacian Javelineers. Ah, Javelin. Them. Cool. And I put up my own text there. And white didn't have a lot of counters, so that was pretty simple. Uh, then we've got Goblin tokens from Goblin Warrens. Put some lore text that I found, I think maybe on other goblin cards. So, goblins on one side. And the other side, there's a lot of crazy tokens in this set, which are really complicated because it, most people track tokens with class beads. So it's like dwarven armorers, which give like 01 tokens. Then you've got, geez, I can't even remember which gives a 10 token. So, 
thought it was best represented by a weapon and a shield. That's also dwarven armor. I think you can choose actually with dwarven yeah, armor. Enchant your creature. It's quite unique. Like this, and it'd be obvious. Easy to read from the other side of the table. That's it for red. That's actually one of the main problems I've had, David, with, with playing Fallen Empire um, drafts. It's all those different tokens, keeping track of all that, Blue, what's I happening with the glass beads. Pretty cool tokens. And counters and stuff. So this is a Homerid. This was illustrated by Heather Hudson, I think, actually, to be a Homerid token. But I'm not certain of that. Um, cool quote. Wow, really? Cool looking Homerids for use with... Comrade spawning bed. So cool. I didn't know that Hatter Hudson made those. And so Blue has all sorts of tide states. Tidal like flats. Like tidal influence. <laughs> the idea oh, there, sorry, tidal influence. I find a tidal influence, probably not. Tidal influence. I'll just get a get a picture on the on the screen, it's David. It's bed. such it's such a weird card. Example, but so when there's when you're in the two tide counters position in the center, your card would be overlapped like this. And then when there's one tide counter, two, three. So you can kind of shift it around that way to show the states. That was the purpose. Wow, of that. I needed these counters because I actually played uh, with that card. This is a marker, the so you constructed. Hummered Warriors ability, uh, causing it not to untap for one step. You can just put this on as a reminder. Wow, that is sweet. Uh, then I have a Siren Marker which is you control an enchanted creature from the Sea Singer. Uh, and then you've got the, the Homerid ones. So if you have a Homerid warrior. Homerid is such a fun thing, you card. Would put it over top and then one tide counter, two tide counters, three tide counters. And you can just go like this one. I mean, Homerid is just one of the worst 2-2 two, two creatures two. in Magic. Slide it around like that. And then you've got another one. Same idea. For green, you've got the famous Soprolling. Of course. Ron this Spencer is a art. composite art I did of a piece from Ron Spencer on a Ron Spencer Swamp illustration, color corrected. Beautiful, man. Beautiful. So forest marker for when you change your opponent's lands into forest using Thelnite Monks. Oh, wow. Spore cloud marker for creatures that don't untap during their next untap step because of spore cloud. You've just added, like, everything. Every possible counter or effect in the game. And in black, we've got Thrulls. It's an alternate, I think, art for Mindstab Thrall by Mark Tidden. So I made it into the Thrall token. And then you've got the counters for the order. Uh, sorry, Evan Prater. Uh, so minus two, minus two counters that he gets every turn. And then if you sack a Thrall, you remove one and put on a 1-0 counter. Again, a nice illustration from Ron Spencer. And wow, look at that illustration. <laughs> those other crazy counters in black. A one, a one plus one you plus can, two You counter. can really see the in inspiration one he took two from plus Alien. Two counters. In the work of, of Ron also, Spencer during Yacht the Fallen Empire's era. Alternate arts by Ron Spencer. Wow, very cool. These tokens are just a bomb. Everything. Yeah, so had a blast making this set. It was the cube, rather. Super fun. So, yeah, David, I just want to. Thank you, you know, for making this video, making your time. We had a little bit of contact on, on our uh, Patreon Discord uh, where you showed me first the, um, the counter cards. And I just got really, or I should say the token cards and the counter cards. And I just got really excited. And then you told me, well, I actually also have a cube. And I said, could you please make a video so we can share your cube right here on Timmy Talks and, and show it to all the other Fallen Empire's fanatics, I'm sure they are out there, and then you can make your own cube. One of the things um, that I really, um, well, I wouldn't say get frustrated about, but that's that old school formats that allow you to play with Fallen Empires, you usually just pick the usual suspects, and that makes sense, right? You want to pick like the best cards 
to get the best results. So you see people just boarding in Goblin Grenade, Hame to Turek, maybe, you know, maybe some other cards like uh, Order of Lightbur, Order of the Ebon Hand, but so many cool cards in Fallen Empires just don't see the light of day. And this is not just for Fallen Empires, it's for a lot of other sets, but maybe because when I started playing, I always got Fallen Empire cards for free. I always wanted to play them and I couldn't really play them because the decks were just simply too powerful that I played them against. And that's what I really like about this cube. This cube offers a place for all those cool cards. Like you see it here, the Thorn Talet, the Dwarven Catapult, the Acacian Phalanx, you know, the Combat Medics, Dwarven Soldiers, all those goofy cards that usually don't have a home in Magic. By making a cube like this, David, you've given them a home. And I think that's, that's really, really cool. Um, if you'd like to know more about David's cube, I've put links in the description below. One of the links is just to his entire cube list. So you can just see the cube list. Um, I will also ask him about the counters and, and the token cards that he's made because I think they're just insane. I love to see like the special edition card that you've made. Um, and and just, just you, you thought about everything. It's really impressive. I also like that idea of adding conspiracy cards for kind of a, another, creating another twist. Um, yeah, there, here we see a country recently spiked, unfortunately, but I'm sure it'll go down again. It's a beautiful, beautiful card, but it, it shouldn't be $18. That is just ridiculous. It should be what a dollar, maybe $2. That's more than enough. Anyway, am I, am I talking about finance again? Why am I talking about finance? Who cares? Um, so here is kind of showing us the cards per color, right? So these are all the fallen empire cards in white that he has selected. And here are the cards in blue that uh, he has selected. I really liked it for Daily and Night, and with Phantasmal Terrain, you can actually play it. There's a title influence, by the way, with all those crazy counters. And here's, he is showing his red cards. There we go. Org, of course, the 6-6 six, six Trampler. I think it would be interesting. He showed Paralyze earlier as possible inclusions. Paralyze and Orc work together very well, of course, because Orc cannot attack if your opponent create, uh, controls a creature with power 3 or greater. With Paralyze, you can tap the creatures down and open up the way for Orc. So I actually think Orc could be a really good inclusion here, um, David, in, in your cube. But hey, you know best. You've played with it, but just my two cents. And uh, what I like is... You know, he's enabled Goblin Grenade, but I don't think it's too powerful within this cube, you know? So I think there's, there's there seems to be a balance. And he's shown a couple of synergies here. Of course, the Reef Shaman and Goblins of the Flark work very well together. Goblins of the Flark having Mountain Walk. So that's pretty nice. Um, we're gonna leave you here, David. Uh, again, thank you very much for showing uh, your cube here on the channel. It's uh, beautiful, like I said, all the links or in the description below if you want to build this cube yourself. I think I'm actually going to build your cube. Um, if you want to support the channel, um, you've already done it actually by watching this video. You can also leave a like, leave a comment, subscribe if you're not a subscriber yet. And also you can become a patron like David. Um, it already starts from a dollar and you help me keep creating content and also keep uh, well, this is not my content, this is David's content, but helping others to showcase all the cool stuff that they've built that's old school magic related. Um, okay, so that's that for now. Uh, let's take a look at the end scroll and let's take a look at all the fantastic, amazing uh, patrons and channel members of Timmy Talks. What shall we do with the drunken sailor? What shall we do with the drunken sailor? What shall we do with the drunken sailor?
Ik het als ik het zomba kan zien.